In this video, we have a special guest. We have Megan Sayer with us, and we're gonna both be sharing some advice on how to get started with singing, top tips for singers, uh, with beginners in mind, but these tips are also absolutely appropriate for professionals as well. Megan is a singer-songwriter, uh, performer, how else would you describe yourself? A vocalist. <laughs> vocalist, yes. And you recently had a single out? Yes, yes. Where was this released? So it was released uh, last Friday. It's called Since He's Been Away. And it's available on iTunes, Spotify. I've got the music video coming out on YouTube as well. <laughs> Links will all be at the top of the description on YouTube and anywhere else where I post this video. Um, yes, loads of experience. And I'm really thrilled to have Megan with us today so that we can um, talk through this. How did you get started singing at all? Back back when you first started when back you were younger. When I first started, so without being too stereotypical, I did just start singing when I was little. Okay. Um, I got a solo singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. How old Angel were you? Gabriel. I was three years old. Oh wow. Um, <laughs> And it was kind of downhill from there. So a lot of <laughs> <laughs> a lot of my stuff, um, I would. I was too young for singing lessons. I didn't start singing lessons until I was about ten. So it was very much just singing at home, listening to songs I really enjoyed. I was brought up with a very eclectic mix of music, so that was always fun. It's funny how some people are just thrown into the music thing as well. To put that into context, at three years old in nursery, I was an elephant <laughs> in the nativity because everyone remembers the elephants in the nativity. Yeah. The elephants, I remember those. So, but I think uh, it must be an important point to say that all of this starts at home. Yes. All of this starts at home and families, mums and dads, aunties and uncles watching, it is your job to encourage this kind of thing uh, to all, all the younger members of your family. And if you're wanting to take on singing or start doing this yourself, you can start at any age, but we have to just start. Take, yeah. take those steps to just start singing in the home and uh, and go from there, really. When did it get a bit more serious than that? When did so it get... probably when I was at school, I started singing lessons. I had both contemporary and classical singing lessons. Okay, so, so quite, quite a proper route. Really. Yeah, yeah, traditional route. So I'm fully classically trained. That's kind of where I started. But obviously I also wanted to do contemporary because being a teenager, you want to be able to sing the songs that you love and hear as well. So yeah, that's kind of when it started. I gigged from a very young age. I just got out there um bought myself a speaker so that i could set so myself solo up. not with a band so i did a lot of solo stuff with backing tracks um uh, mainly because it just meant that i could sit on my computer get backing tracks practice by myself at home and get out there self-sufficient exactly absolutely. yeah so and then acoustic duos as well and stuff like that it's um nice to be able to take songs and work them and really yeah, make them a part of your voice as well and break them down. So. And then, of course, songwriting would perhaps happen around that time and that becomes... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, songwriting came a little later to me, actually, and it's something that I'm still very much enjoying, enjoying like discovering, working out what I want to write and how I write it and finding, yeah, my own voice in an original sense as well. And we all, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, starting off with your number one tip out of top three tips... Um, for people getting started with singing and also keeping as wider people in, in mind, basically. Yeah. What would your number one tip be? So, yeah, it can be quite daunting when you're trying to start singing. So I would say the first thing that I would always do is just pick a song that you know, something that you could even just hum the tune along to. You don't need to be an expert on this song, but something that you enjoy listening to and that you know you're going to also enjoy developing and learning. So you want it to feel really comfortable, don't you, really, mm -hmm. I think? So definitely that is my first, first Absolutely. Tip. Pick a song you know and pick a song you like. Um, and what I would add to that is we also want you to be aware that whether you're playing it on guitar or singing along to a backing tracks or singing along to the original song, uh, be aware of keys. Start to be aware of the range of your voice. So a musical key can be higher or lower, especially for singers. And it, it doesn't, there are ways around to get around different keys on guitar. We can use capos and things. But for a vocalist, it is limiting. It, it, there is a definite range. Um, that everyone's voice is in and and cannot go out of, otherwise it won't sound good, even if you're a professional singer. Um, and finding out what familiar keys, what is your highest note, what is your lowest note, all that stuff really helps. But um, I, I would say do a variety as well, a small variety of songs that you really know. I think a lot of people get hooked on just, I want to sing this one song. And we all kind of start there, we all have our favourites. And just just get a, a, a small variety of songs that you know. 
lyrics too off by heart that are just fun to sing and um and think about the, the cues from there i've yeah. sort of like 10 tips in one tip there. <laughs> uh number two what would you say so i think this is really important it's having the confidence to be loud and practicing with your full voice so i don't mean that you have to sing really loudly but don't keep it inside and keep it to yourself it's really important that you practice somewhere where you can feel comfortable and feel confident within yourself. It can just be somewhere within your house. It doesn't have to be in front of other people, but really make sure that you are yeah, making that sound come out. And you mentioned this from a gigging point of view because people practice when they're quiet and learning at home and then they go to the gig and it's a totally different feeling because they're being loud and expressive and they're not practiced for that they're yeah. not prepared for that yeah exactly you're having to rehearse <clears throat> your muscles to understand when you're going to do certain movements and certain things so it's really important to do that from the from the get-go and from you know put it in my point of view it is an entirely different thing singing and playing an acoustic guitar on a, a video like this in this environment to doing a gig with a band it is it doesn't matter how much I do this, it would not prepare me mm. for that. So the, the situation does matter. With the being loud thing, I always recommend, try if, if you're able to, try and practice in the car. Especially if you drive and you're on your own, because you can be as loud as you want. <laughs> on the highways, on the motorways, get the playlist on Spotify. And um, yeah, sing as loud as you want and, and have some fun. And that's when I've realised I can do things that I wouldn't have otherwise realised I can yeah, do definitely. for sure. <laughs> and tip number three. So tip number three is a bit of a scary one because we don't like hearing our own voice, but I think it's really important, especially if you're just starting out and you want to understand what's actually happening when you're singing, is record yourself. So mm -hmm. I'm not talking big, impressive recordings just on your phone, mm. just a voice note. Really get used to being self-reflective and being able to give yourself feedback and yes. constructive criticism because that way you'll be able to gain the sounds that you want moving forward this is just for your eyes only this is to give you feedback of what you sound like um i think we all have that thing where you hear our own voice on an answering machine or something i hear myself on videos all the time and go, i don't sound like that do i come on that's ridiculous um, that happens with singing as well, but you can start to make those fine adjustments, um, those vowel sounds, as we'll look at in, an, in another video, that are, that are so important and they shape the entire sound of, of how you sound. And you can do them without realising them unless you can hear yourself back. Be forgiving. Be your own best friend with this sort of stuff. Be as forgiving as you would if your best friend was singing with your own feedback as well. So they're the top three tips. You can check out some covers that me and Megan are going to be filming. Uh, they'll be released soon or there'll be some up already on YouTube. Again, you can click Megan's links at the top of the description below. Original music, uh, Instagram, everything like that. And thank you very much for coming down. Uh, there'll be more to come from Megan, I'm sure.